Hello and welcome to Brawl Duel. Today we're going to bring maximum carnage into Skyrim. Imagine putting all of Dragonborn's strength into the swing of a greatsword, and instead of it bouncing off them like it was a practiced dummy weapon, it sliced right through their abdomen, spilling their innards all over the battlefield. Maybe you could even slice that enemy right in two. Well, today we're going to show you how you can do just that. Old school modders will remember the Deadly Mutilation mod from 2013. There hasn't really been an updated version since, and it was never available for the special edition, until now in the form of the Maximum Carnage mod. In this video we're going to cover its features, and then show you a bunch of similar mods that can both complement and expand on a version of Skyrim that's more violent, more bloody, and one that's not for the faint of heart. But first, for something a bit more wholesome, we have Loot Crate. This is their Elder Scrolls Crate, a quarterly loot box that comes with all sorts of exclusives from the world of Tamriel. Each box comes with a theme, and this one is Champions celebrating some of the brave fighters in the Elder Scrolls universe. The first thing that always jumps out is the statue, and this time it's the Ordinator Helmet. If you played Morrowind, you'll remember these guys as the guards of Vivic City. The unique plume on their helmet always made them stand out, and the statue shows it off well, with a lot of extra detail. Up next we have a few different clothing items. First is the matching Dragonborn scarf and beanie. The scarf resembles one of the word walls around Skyrim, and I think that's the word fuss highlighted in blue. Great for winter, or to just drape over a shelf and the pairing beanie is that classic Dragonborn helmet style. Alongside that we've also got a brand new pair of socks. These are designed after one of the styles in ESO, but they also kind of look like glass armour too. There's also a companion's keychain. This has a surprising amount of weight to it, it definitely feels solid. The middle bit also rotates, showing the two faces of the companion's guild, revealing their secret werewolf circle. And finally, the last piece is an imperial pin, another fantastic piece for my ever-growing loot box collection. If you want goodies just like this, then you can order your own crate today using the link in the description. The next crate is all about conjuration, so the possibilities for loot are almost endless. Be sure to use our code BRODUEL15 for 15% off your box, and thanks to Loot Crate for sponsoring this video. Jumping back into the mods, let's dive right into Maximum Carnage. This is a mod that essentially adds a variety of new types of killing moves. They're not the type of kill moves from vanilla, where the camera pans and maybe something a bit more cinematic happens. Instead, they're new, more violent ways to finish off an enemy, with both physical and elemental damage. Whenever you finish an enemy with a power attack, you should see a maximum carnage death. Bladed weapons will cut and slice the enemy, whereas blunt weapons will smash and crush them. What happens more specifically depends on the type of power attack you use and the kind of enemy you're facing. A horizontal slash with a greatsword, for example, could slice right through the abdomen of a humanoid, spilling their guts everywhere. Or instead, that same slash could sever the legs of a giant, or even slice that Falmer straight in two. Whereas for that same Falmer, a vertical slash could instead split its head right open, probably one of the more gruesome deaths added by the mod. The same vertical slash on a human, however, might cause a vicious cut on their face, so it depends a lot on the enemy. The same sort of logic applies to blunt weapons. The powerful swing of a Warhammer launched towards pretty much anything with a head will completely crush their skull, launching their brain matter all over the battlefield. You can also sever body parts with blunt weapons, but instead of slicing them off, you simply smash them off. There's a great mix of animal-based kills too, from hitting the jaw straight off a saber cat to slicing right through the top of a spider. All of them are incredibly satisfying and pretty brutal. It's not always perfect, and if you pay super close attention to every action, some things won't add up. Like sometimes you can literally hit their body, only for their head to explode. But all in all, in normal gameplay, it works very well. So far we've only really shown you the physical side of the mod, but it also works for destruction magic. Typically this means fire will burn, frost will break them up into ice chunks, and shock will… well, it causes quite an interesting reaction. While these side effects work well, we highly recommend that you instead use the frozen electrocuted combustion mod. This offers visual effects for a much wider range of magic, including poison, sun, fear, and air damage. Not only are these effects arguably much better visually, there's also much more depth and it's highly customizable. For example, your fire spells can either burn, skeletonize, or completely vaporize your enemy. This can be changed in the mod menu, or you can use the dynamic system that applies the effects depending on how powerful the spell is. As another example, weak shock spells might cause them to jolt and shake after death, whereas a middle spell might cause an x-ray effect, and then late game spells cause them to completely explode on impact. There's just so many cool effects, and it works perfectly alongside maximum carnage as long as you turn its elemental side off in the mod menu. With all of the new ways you'll be killing enemies, you'll want to gain complete control over kill moves in general, and for that you'll need violence. This will help you craft the perfect blend between Maximum Carnage and Vanilla Kill Moves. They both work together well just how they are, but sometimes the cinematic camera pulls you away from the new effects. If you always play in first person, you can force them to stay that way, never pulling you into a cinematic third person view. Or instead you can make it so kill moves happen multiple times per fight, adding much more action and flair to your kills. Also, since Maximum Carnage doesn't offer decapitations for humanoids, violence can do that for you. 
Once again, you can control the art of a decapitation in the mod menu, so it fits right in with the new Maximum Carnage kills. Another separate and even more violent kill move mod is Heartbreaker. This lets you activate a weakened target to literally punch into their chest and pull out their still beating heart. It doesn't get much more violent than this, unless of course you turn on the explosive mode, which does exactly what you think it does. For today's last two mods we have a relatively new one and then a classic. The first is Dirt and Blood. This offers a new dynamic visual system for Dirt and Blood, for both your character and NPCs. As the days go by your character will become more and more filthy, adding a dirt effect to your character. On the other side of the mod, as you enter combat, you've got more and more bloody. The same applies to NPCs, as they get hit they'll become more and more covered in blood. These are great subtle effects to show you the general wear and tear of adventuring and battling around Skyrim. As you look down upon that troll that you just sliced in half, you can continue to look straight down to see its blood splashed across your entire body. The visuals added by the mod are broken down into four stages, offering increasingly filthy and bloody visuals. These are mostly just for show, but in the very last stage you'll notice NPCs treat you slightly differently too. If you're really dirty, merchants will raise their prices. And if you're covered in blood, it's a little easier to intimidate people. To clean yourself off after a long day, you just need to jump into a river, go for a swim, or even just sit in the rain. Anything to get yourself wet. And for today's final mod, I don't think you could have a gory, more bloody Skyrim without enhanced blood textures. Not only does this offer new textures for all kinds of blood, it also gives you more control over how much blood you see. And now that you're slicing off limbs, crushing skulls and all the rest of it, you'll probably want a more dramatic, bloody effect. Pools of blood will now form under fallen enemies, and huge blood splashes will occur when they die in a violent way. Weakened enemies will even drip blood, so as they lay there, dripping blood almost on death's door, that's when you pick them up, punch through their chest, and pull out their still beating heart. Or you could, you know, smash their skull to smithereens, whatever works for you. And that brings us to the end of today's spotlight. If you want to take things a step further and go into a super dark Skyrim, check out our dark fantasy overhaul. Or to enhance combat, check out our first person combat overhaul. As always, be sure to support mod authors whenever possible, and thanks for watching.